Now we will take a look at some of the structures that are entering the thigh from the posterior abdominal wall and the pelvic region. Here you can see the common iliac artery dividing into the internal iliac artery and the external iliac artery. And here you can see the external iliac vein. They pass under the inguinal ligament here and become femoral artery and the femoral vein. If you go back to the posterior abdominal area, you can identify the psoas major muscle here and the iliacus muscle. They enter the thigh here below the inguinal ligament and form one muscle which is called the iliopsoas muscle. This iliopsoas muscle is attached to the lesser trochanter of the femur. It's a strong flexor of the hip joint. In this specimen, first get yourself oriented. This is the medial side of the specimen. And this is the lateral side of the specimen. This is the proximal side, which is the pelvic region. And this is the distal side, which is the uh, knee joint area. Thigh is divided into three compartments. This is the anterior compartment or the extensor compartment. This is the medial compartment or the adductor compartment. And in this specimen, I have turned a specimen to the other side. This is the posterior compartment or the flexor compartment. The main group of muscles in the posterior compartment or the flexor compartment are the hamstrings. If I go back to the previous specimen, the main group of muscles in the extensor compartment or the anterior compartment are the quadriceps. The details of the names of these muscles we will take later. Now we will study the muscles of the anterior compartment or the extensor compartment. Identify this muscle, a slender long muscle which is called the sartorius muscle. I will reflect that muscle so that you can clearly see the quadriceps muscle. There are four parts to the quadriceps muscle, the vestus medialis on the medial side, vestus lateralis on the lateral side, the rectus femoris in the middle and if I reflect rectus femoris, you can identify the vestus intermedius underneath the rectus femoris muscle. These four muscles will form the quadriceps muscle. The quadriceps is attached to the patella. through the quadriceps tendon and the patella is attached to the tibial tuberosity through the patella ligament. All these muscles in the anterior compartment are supplied by the branches of the femoral nerve. Try to identify the femoral nerve lateral to the femoral artery. This is the femoral nerve dividing into its branches. Now we will study the medial compartment or the adductor compartment here. I will again reflect the sartorius muscle so that you get a clear view of the medial compartment. Identify the pectineus muscle and the adductor longus muscle. I will lift the adductor longus muscle so that you can see the adductor brevis muscle here. This is another long slender muscle in the adductor compartment, like the sartorius in the anterior compartment. This is called gracilis. 
here is the adductor magnus muscle. You can see it better in the posterior view later. The main nerve that supplies the adductor compartment is the obturator nerve. You can see branches of the obturator nerve here between the adductor longus and the adductor magnus muscles. The obturator nerve and the femoral nerve which we discussed earlier share same lumbar segments L2, L3 and L4. Now we will study the muscles of the posterior compartment or the flexor compartment. First you get yourself oriented to this specimen. This is the medial side. This is the lateral side. Proximal and distal. Knee joint is in that area. In this specimen you can identify the hamstring muscles. The muscle lying laterally is called biceps femoris muscle. And these two muscles are called semitendinosus and semimembranosus. Semitendinosus lies behind the semimembranosus muscle. This is semitendinosus. Further in front, you can see a large muscle here. This is adductor magnus that you could not see clearly in the medial aspect. This part of the adductor magnus is called hamstring part of the adductor magnus. You can also see two muscles we already studied, the gracilis and the sartorius muscles, which do not belong to this posterior compartment. These hamstring muscles pass across the knee joint and are attached to the proximal end of the leg bones. If you come back to the origin, all these muscles take origin from the ischial tuberosity of the hip bone. Here is the ischial tuberosity of the hip bone. This is the sciatic nerve, the largest nerve in the body. The sciatic nerve has two components in it, the peroneal component and the tibial component. The tibial component of the sciatic nerve supplies all hamstring muscles, including the hamstring part of the adductor magnus muscle. The rest of the adductor magnus is supplied by the obturator nerve, the nerve of the adductor compartment. It is important that you remember the motor nerve supply of each compartment of the thigh. The anterior compartment or the extensor compartment of the thigh is supplied by the femoral nerve. The medial compartment or the adductor compartment of the thigh is supplied by the obturator nerve. The posterior compartment or the flexor compartment of the thigh is supplied by the sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve has two components in it the peroneal component and the tibial component. The posterior compartment is supplied by the tibial component of the sciatic nerve. The adductor magnus has an adductor part and a hamstring part. The hamstring part of the adductor magnus is also supplied by the tibial component of the sciatic nerve. Gluteal region this is a new specimen, therefore get yourself oriented first. This is the medial side and this is the lateral side. You already know that this is the proximal and that is distal. You can see a large muscle here which is attached between the hip bone, sacrum, sacrotuberous ligament and the proximal end of the femur here. This is gluteus maximus. 
It is a strong extensor and an external rotator of the hip joint. It is one of the main muscles of the gluteal region as well. If we reflect the gluteus maximus muscle, you can see an important muscle underneath. This muscle is called piriformis muscle. It takes origin from the middle three pieces of the sacrum. That is two, three and four pieces of the sacrum and gets inserted into the greater trochanter, medial aspect. This muscle, the piriformis muscle, is an important landmark in the gluteal region. There are neurovascular structures entering the gluteal region above the piriformis muscle, which are called gluteal, superior gluteal vessels and nerves. And the structures entering the gluteal region below that are called inferior gluteal vessels and nerves. Sciatic nerve, which we discussed earlier, also enters the gluteal region below the piriformis muscle. If I put back the gluteus maximus muscle and take it aside again, you will see another muscle here, which is called gluteus medius muscle. If I lift that also, you will see gluteus minimus muscle. The gluteus maximus muscle is supplied by the inferior gluteal nerve. The gluteus medius and minimus muscles plus there is another muscle on the lateral side which is called tensor fasciae latae muscle. These three muscles, gluteus medius, minimus and tensor fasciae latae are all supplied by the superior gluteal nerve. These three muscles are strong abductors of the hip joint. They are important during walking. Paralysis of these muscles leads to positive Trendelenburg sign and Trendelenburg gait. There are a few other muscles that you can identify in this region. If I lift the sciatic nerve, you can see this is quadriceps femoris muscle and above the quadriceps femoris muscle you can identify three small muscles superior gamellus, inferior gamellus and obturator internus tendon here. In this specimen identify the skin and the subcutaneous fat layer reflected and underneath that you can see the deep fascia of the thigh. Deep fascia of the thigh is a very tough fascia and it is called fascia lata. Fascia lata encloses two muscles. Here it encloses the tensor fascia latae muscle and behind it encloses gluteus maximus muscle. Fascia lata thickens on its lateral aspect and forms what is called iliotibial tract. It is attached to the proximal end of the leg bones. 